At a time when GameStop stock price is turbulent to say the least, it's important to remember that not everyone who invests in the stock market actually knows what they're doing. Take for example the Nintendo shareholder meetings and the question and answer sessions, in which some investors ask the weirdest off-topic questions imaginable. Bear in mind that, at minimum, Nintendo shares cost nearly 5 million yen, or 50,000 US dollars. These aren't casual fans buying Nintendo stock for kicks and giggles. These are serious investors who, when given the chance to ask the company's president a question, will complain about the food in the cafeteria? Here then are five weird questions asked in Nintendo shareholder meetings. Number one. Stop talking about games. It's a shame that we only have a transcript for these investor meetings, because it would be amazing to see the reaction to some of these questions. Spare a thought for the frustrated investor who once said, I do not understand video games, and I even feel angry because, at Nintendo shareholder meetings, the shareholders always discuss things relating to video games or such childish topics as what the future of video games should be. Yes. This shareholder was angry because the shareholder meeting for a video games company focused on discussing video games. Number two, I got lost. Investor Q&A meetings are an excellent opportunity for shareholders to learn more about the company that they own a part of, and in fairness, most investors use the opportunity to ask about Nintendo's business endeavours. Not so for one investor, who instead chose to complain that they'd gotten lost on the way to the meeting. They said, I got terribly lost coming here today. Every time I come here, I feel that you should take into consideration where many of the shareholders attending are coming from, and that you may want to consider offering us some conveniences like a courtesy bus from JR Kyoto Station. As I feel this is rather an inconvenient place to visit by subway or by bus, I'd like you to consider more about this sort of thing than enriching the contents of the gifts you give to the attending shareholders. Bless Satoru Iwata, who did his absolute best to stay diplomatic when he responded. I understand your comment is that we should be aware that our headquarters is located in an inconvenient place, and that therefore we should prioritise smoother arrivals of our shareholders by, for example, providing a shuttle bus over the gifts for the attending shareholders. We will consider your opinion in preparation for the future shareholders' meetings. Thank you. To date, Nintendo has not given any official announcement of plans to run a shuttle bus for the benefit of a single confused investor, but then, that's hardly something they're going to cover during a Nintendo Direct. Number three, the food sucks. In fairness to this investor, it does seem as if they have other people's comfort in mind when they asked about the food served in the Nintendo staff cafeteria. After first asking for an update on the cancelled peripheral, the Wii Vitality Sensor, they then said, In addition, I heard that the quality of the company cafeteria is not so good from one of my acquaintances who works for Nintendo. I think you should ensure that everybody is able to enjoy eating at the cafeteria as part of the employee welfare programme, and improve internal communication among employees." While this is an odd comment to bring up in a shareholder meeting, because it has absolutely nothing to do with the shareholders or the company's business, it does sound like this was an issue that needed addressing at the time. Satoru Iwata took the time to give a very detailed explanation for the demise of the Vitality Sensor, before saying, "'As for our company cafeteria, we regularly hear the same opinion when we gather feedback from employees. However, opinions vary considerably by individual, and not all employees agree with this. Still, I examine such an opinion as an issue of the company because we receive such feedback constantly. Thank you. Number four. Let me give a presentation. Never underestimate the confidence that money can bring. One investor, apparently unhappy with Nintendo's method of conducting business, decided to try and personally improve the company's direction. They said, I don't think that the current Nintendo is making full use of its potential. I believe that there is a way to improve your business more and more by taking advantage of what you already have. As I have a specific plan for it, I would like to make a ten-minute presentation to Mr. Miyamoto, Mr. Takeda, and Mr. Iwata as soon as tomorrow if it is possible. Again, Satoru Iwata was very diplomatic in responding to this rather generous proposal to give a presentation on everything that Nintendo is doing wrong. He said, It is difficult for all of us to devote time to your specific plan. However, if you can communicate with one of our employees available here today, 
We will definitely hear about your ideas by receiving their report. Number 5. My wife is getting angry. Nintendo's investors can be broadly split into two camps. Those who invest purely because the company appears to be a solid investment, and those who invest because it's fun to own a slice of Nintendo. This question appears to have come from someone in the latter camp, because they admit that, if anything, their family likes Nintendo games a little too much. They said, My son is enjoying the competitive games very much. I made a family rule that he is allowed to play games on a few days per week, for a maximum of two hours each day, but it doesn't work well. My wife is getting angry as this situation is hindering his studies. Although this may be just what Nintendo intends, could you please explain Nintendo's recommendations for usage? Yes. This investor stood up in a Q&A meeting to tell everyone about how their son plays too many video games instead of studying, and that their wife is getting angry. Most people would assume that this is a matter for the family to work out together, but not this investor. No, they want Nintendo to dictate exactly how much time they should let their kids play games. You can almost understand why the first investor on this list is annoyed at time being taken up in meetings talking about video games, if this is the kind of thing they have to put up with. Yet again, you can really see the kindness and diplomacy that Satoru Iwata brought to Nintendo on display in his answer. Not only did he take this question completely seriously, he gave a thorough explanation of Nintendo's approach to screen time from a development standpoint. He first said, I have mixed emotions about hearing, this may be just what Nintendo intends. Of course, we should try our best to produce appealing products which keep users excited, but on the other hand, it is a big problem if such excitement causes family troubles or affects a user's life balance. He then elaborated, Nintendo once seriously considered adopting a function which would force games to stop mandatorily, to prevent children from playing the game at the time that parents had previously decided. However, we also considered how the players would feel if the game suddenly stopped during an exciting part. We finally determined to integrate a function to record the playing time instead of making the game shut down. More specifically, our message is, as we record the playing time, and such records may be checked any time, please communicate with your children by using we together. And, through such communication, please come to a common understanding and a suitable arrangement for your family. This is the nicest possible way that someone could say, we can't police your kids for you. If there's a moral to these stories, apart from the obvious fact that many stock market investors have no idea what they're doing, it's that diplomacy and kindness never go out of style. Among his many talents, Satoru Iwata was an expert at diffusing difficult situations, and it's clear to see how much kindness and respect he brought to his job.